thanks to the organizer to giving me the opportunity to speak about this paper, uh, microbiota of the organic and thermal mats uh, and uh, its anti-inflammatory properties. As you maybe know, the Ugandan Thermal District is located very close to Padova, near the regional park of the Ugandan Hills, and include the municipality of Abano, Montegrotto, Battaglia, and Calzignano Terme. The district has an ancient history with the effectiveness of its thermal treatment already known since the 7th century. And now the district is recognized as the oldest and larger thermal center in Europe with 100, about 100 thermal spa and 1.8 million annual tourists before COVID. Among treatments offered by the spa, the MAP therapy is one of the most important. This is recognized by the Italian health system and is used for treatment of inflammation uh, due to arthro-rheumatic pathologies. Uh, the MAP therapy consists in the application of uh, uh, special mats uh, called uh, therapeutic or macho mats uh, directly on the skin of the patients uh, at uh, 38 uh, uh, degree, about 38 degree, degree for 20 minutes every day for two weeks. The therapeutic effect of the matter linked to it, to electrolyte from thermal water, but also to bioactive molecules produced by the mud microbiota. The mud, uh, the therapeutic mud is in fact not ready to use and need a period of preparation following a traditional method that is called the maturation that can be considered an ancient biotechnological process. The process starts with the extraction of the virgin clay from a thermal lake, the Lake Costa d'Arqua near the Ogonian Hills. That is, uh, the clay is provided to uh, each spa and put inside tanks or silos uh, where the uh, single spa produces its own therapeutic mud. The mud maturation process is described uh, in the disciplinare, this um, document uh, that report the uh, methods uh, um, used by tradition. Virgin clay is uh, um, put in the tanks, as already said, or silos, uh, and uh, covered by a flowing layer of uh, thermal water at uh, about 38 degrees, as described by uh, the disciplinare. Uh, uh, this is uh, left uh, for two months in this condition with the flowing water. And during that time, we can observe the growing on, of uh, a green biofilm on the top of the mats. Uh, and at the end of this period, the mats is completely covered by this uh, green biofilm. At this time, uh, the mud is mixed and put uh, at seven degrees for some hour and then is ready for the uh, application. Uh, due to its origin and the unique preparation method, the Ungania mud is certified as, as DOC. And uh, moreover, uh, in 2013, the Ugandan therapeutic mud gained the European patent due to the study on formidium, that is the most abundant uh, cyanobacterium present in the bi mud biofilm. The mud biofilm are in fact uh, composed mainly by cyanobacterium that are uh, photosynthetic bacteria. In particular, uh, formidium produced galactolipids uh, uh, that resulted to have uh, anti-inflammatory properties uh, as demonstrated both in vitro and uh, on human cartilage uh, and in vivo in mouse. However, beside uh, a formidium uh, that is considered for uh, those reasons, uh, the target species of matter mats, uh, we observed a uh, higher um, biodiversity in cyanobacteria. And uh, uh, this is totally unexplored and probably mm, the same for medium and other species are able to produce uh, other bioactive molecules that could contribute to the final therapeutic effect of mud therapies. Uh, it is important to uh, consider that cyanobacteria 
are known for the production of bioactive compounds that they synthesize due to their very high physiological plasticity. Cyanobacteria are in fact pho photosynthetic bacteria that appeared in our planet uh, 3.5 billion years ago and are still present in every environment of our planet, uh, even in uh, uh, very extreme conditions such as uh, cold and hot deserts and polar glaciers uh, and thermal springs uh, such as Yellowstone here uh, at the water temperature up to seven degrees. In recent years, uh, the analysis of, of microbiota of thermal springs uh, has gained more and more appeal for the discovery of new compounds of interest uh, that cyanobacteria produce to cope with uh, uh, this high temperature. So study biodiversity of this uh, uh, environment uh, it means discovering new compounds, new bi bioactive important compounds. Uh, the aim of our work is thus to characterize the microbiota biodiversity of the uh, thermal springs of the Oganian Hills and uh, thermal mats used for therapies. Uh, as uh, every spa produces its own uh, therapeutic mat, as uh, already said. And uh, so our interest was to define how much for medium is there and how many other species could be there. And also uh, how the environmental parameters and operational parameters uh, applied by the different spa could affect the uh, final products. So uh, meaning different spa produce different therapeutic mud with different microbiota or not. The third point uh, is to search for other bioactive compounds. So considering the first point, uh, we started uh, to uh, analyze mature mud for, uh, from uh, 33 thermal hotels, uh, sampling in May and November, and uh, for a total samples uh, of 116 samples. Uh, the location are here, and you can see different uh, numbers that are uh, the numbers of uh, indicating the temperature of maturation, mud maturation. As you can see, uh, there is a large um, range of temperature. Uh, it's not so easy to, uh, to maintain the temperature close to 38 degrees as indicated by the disciplinary. And so we have a large variability. We have variability also in the, um, um, sorry, uh, in the pH and in the salinity uh, as indicated here and in conductivity and the uh, total dissolved uh, solute. And so what we did is to apply um, to apply a uh, um, polyphasic approach starting from uh, 20, 30 subsample for each tanks or silos uh, of each spa. And uh, we collected this sample, we mixed them, we analyzed the different um, physical chemical parameters, but also the chlorophyll content that is a proxy of the cyanobacteria content of the mud, and so the maturation, the level of maturation. And we analyze the uh, cyanobacteria community by light and fluorescence microscopy. And we analyze the total microbial community by next generation sequencing. Uh, this uh, technique is uh, considered crucial for uh, uh, tracing microbiota depending processes, uh, such as thermal mat maturation and its final therapeutic products. The result we obtained uh, are shown in the following chart. And uh, here you have uh, the composition of microbial community uh, that showed the presence of ma four main phyla, chloroflexis, cyanobacteria, bacteroides, and proctobacteria, and no pathogenic species were identified. And we also observed that, that in the range of temperature, maturation temperature between 38 and 47 degrees, we had the highest uh, cyanobacteria concentration. 
while at lower temperature the concentration was, was much lower and at higher con um, temperature was uh, a little bit uh, less. Uh, what's, what was more interesting to see, uh, it was the composition of the single species uh, that are reported here. Uh, in, in the range of, of 38 to uh, 47 degrees, uh, we observed higher cyanobacteria biodiversity, the presence of the target species for medium, but also the presence of other species uh, that uh, uh, could contribute to the effectiveness of the mud. At lower temperature, we had a lower biodiversity and also undesired organisms such as larvae of insects. So uh, low temperature is not good to produce a very good mud. At higher temperature, temperature higher, higher than 47 degrees, we observed a total change in population composition. And so uh, we could say at the end of our work uh, with uh, many other analyses uh, that uh, uh, we could define a new temperature range for, the, for a proper mud maturation process. So from uh, 38, 37 degrees to 47. Uh, enlarging the, the, the range that uh, this pack can use to obtain a very good uh, mud to be certified by DOC. Uh, and we published all, all the results in this paper of 2020 on the microbiota of therapeutic mouths. And in this uh, paper, you can find uh, also the genome, the entire genome of four medium uh, that we analyze with uh, uh, third uh, generation sequences uh, techniques. As regular bioactive compounds, uh, we decide to investigate the effectiveness of other type of compounds, uh, not only uh, lipids, but also uh, polysaccharides. As uh, during the previous uh, uh, sampling, we observed the presence of microbial mats with uh, uh, a, a polysaccharidic matrix uh, very strong, uh, as you can see here from uh, this picture. And extracting the polysaccharides from the mats, uh, we obtain a very high amount of these products. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, these polysaccharides are already known to have anti-inflammatory and, and antioxidant activity uh, from uh, works uh, on other organisms. So we decided to investigate the, the effectiveness and the um, possibility that, that also this compound could contribute to the effectiveness of uh, the mass, the therapeutic mass. Uh, we analyzed the composition of the um, polysaccharides of for medium and also uh, of polysaccharide directly extracted from the mats. And we observed uh, uh, a high presence of uh, uronic acid that uh, confer acidic nature to the uh, polysaccharide re released by the cyanobacteria. And also we observed the uh, uh, presence of high amount of sulfate groups. Uh, we tested the, the effectiveness of these compounds uh, and all the results are published uh, in this paper of 2020. We used uh, as an uh, in vivo model uh, zebrafish. That is a, a small fish uh, that has uh, many advantages. Uh, the larvae do not eat until six days and so uh, they assume the compounds uh, through the skin. And this is really important to, uh, to have something similar that happened during mud therapies. And uh, uh, the larvae are, are transparent and allowed to follow the development of the different organs during, during the first phase uh, of this fish. We tested the, uh, the exopolysaccharide uh, release for, for medium, and uh, we observed uh, no toxicity applying the European uh, accepted test. And uh, we also investigated uh, the effectiveness of the polysaccharides after induction of uh, inflammation in the uh, fish. We utilized three different protocols to induce inflammation the recovery uh, capability uh, due to the application of exopolysaccharide release by uh, for medium. 
And uh, in all cases, we observed uh, uh, that uh, the fish uh, was uh, covering the inflammation effects. In particular, inflammation determined in the fish uh, delay in the development of some, some uh, structure. And in particular, we analyzed the operculum area, that is uh, this one indicated. Uh, this is uh, uh, inflamed fish, uh, and this is uh, a recovered fish. So uh, this uh, uh, um, analysis uh, determined the uh, level of oxification, and is one of the uh, parameters that could allow to uh, evaluate the uh, development of the fish. We observe that uh, during the stress, uh, during inflammation, there is a delay of this ossification. And after uh, application um, to inflamed fish uh, of uh, the polysaccharides, uh, we can recover completely this aspect. The same for the swimming bladder area that uh, uh, decrease uh, or delay in development uh, uh, when uh, the fish is inflamed and is completely recovered when the fish is treated with the uh, exopolysaccharides. Uh, we also analyzed the expression of genes uh, related <clears throat> to uh, anti-inflammatory and inflammation pathways. And we observed uh, the same things. So uh, for the NFKB uh, gene, we observed that uh, under stress it's upregulated. And this uh, regulation is down uh, by the treatment of APS. The same for all the other genes that we analyzed and uh, that are involved in the anti-inflammatory pathway. So we can say that for medium polysaccharides have anti-inflammatory activity and also uh, that the anti-inflammatory activity is comparable to dexamethasone treatment that, that we use uh, to compare the effect of APS from for medium. What we are doing now, now we are testing the um, uh, polysaccharide directly extracted from the therapeutic mud, and we are publishing it. Uh, the paper will come soon. And uh, in the paper will be analyzed also the effect uh, on, of uh, APS uh, on the motility of zebra fish uh, after inflammation and after recovery. So I finished, uh, and... Uh, I would like to thank all the collaborators. So Raffaella Zampieri, that is my PhD student, Barbara, that is the former PhD student involved in biodiversity analysis, and all the collaborators at the Department of Biology, and all of you for your attention. And also, obviously, uh, Fabrizio Caldara, that is the director of the Centro Studi Termali, Pietro Davno, that funded the, the, the research. Thanks. Thanks, Professor La Rocca. Very interesting. You, uh, she's uh, underlined the role of uh, microbiota and uh, its composition and uh, optimal temperature. And uh, any question for audience? I have a question. I have several questions, but maybe I will uh, walk a couple of uh, floor and discuss <laughs> with <laughs> and discuss it's with possible. our speakers in the future days. Uh, if there are Olga, are you interested to this? You have questions? I am very impressed. Uh, about uh, this uh, study and uh, I am thinking how lucky we are in Tekirgyol that our mud is uh, on the bottom of the lake and our task is only to exploit it and from time to time to discover a new uh, way of uh, action. Very interesting uh, presentation and uh, allow me to congratulate uh, all the participants uh, with the, uh, at this uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. I, I have a short question. May I okay. take one minute? Uh, yeah. Why not you, you collaborate with the other people in Padova instead to go ah, I, I'm so far to, <laughs> to Florence? <laughs> no, no, because, no. 
to, let, to the, I, I am a general pathologist, a tutologist. Yeah, I would the, like to help. Yeah, I have no personal interest, just curiosity. No problem. I open to all the collaboration. The people from uh, the researcher from uh, Florence uh, are specialists in the analysis of polysaccharides yes. and not, uh, and not uh, biomedics. Nicoletta, or I am joking 90, yeah. 99%, but I have oh, two I interests. Think, uh, I think I am, that we... like Stefano, a abanoterme born guy. I have personal interest in this. Yeah, yeah. I think that we have to join the the force to 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 work in this field because uh, it's very promising in my opinion. So uh, I will really open to all the collaboration all, because the, the next step will be obviously to test this compound in in the. In the and uh, I am sure we, also Stefano may be the, of some help. And probably Maria Chiara, I hope will convince you that we are potential good partners in your activities without interfering on your your major interest, of course, just to be helpful, hopefully. I know, very, very impressive, very interesting your presentation. Uh, I have a short question. Uh, so after this study, uh, how long is the uh, mat mat maturation process uh, for better uh, uh, anti-inflammatory effect uh, today on base your research <coughs> for the clinical application? Yeah, uh, so uh, what we, we did until now is to define uh, the characteristic of a, a proper mat mature mud. So we started from tradition to see what's happened to a traditional mud, mature mud. And so we defined the microbiota of the traditional produced mature mud. Uh, that is uh, considered the best one, but we don't know if higher temperature with other uh, cyanobacteria composition could lead to uh, more effective mud, mature mud. And uh, the period of maturation, in my opinion, has to be uh, at least uh, one month. At one least month. one month. At least. Because at least. we observed the, the, the continuous increase of the chlorophyll until one month and the stabilization of the population after one month. But those are the first studies that have been done in this, uh, uh, at this level. And uh, so uh, we, we have still to, to do a lot of work to say what is better. So the, the objective now uh, are to determine the effect of the mature mud produced by um, traditional methods and also to test the mud produced at the highest temperature and to um, link the um, microbiota composition to the effect of the mud. And so we have a lot of work to do really, to say uh, this is the best and this is the best time, this is the best uh, mud. Uh, the, um, I think this is a, interesting news because uh, uh, previous research suggested uh, about two months for maturation, yeah. uh, mud maturation. Mm -hmm. It's very, yeah. very two interesting. Months, two months, it's, uh, it's, that is uh, said in the disciplinary and we observe mm -hmm. that after yes. two months is okay. But uh, we also observe that the population is stabilized after one, one little mm -hmm. more than one month. So. Probably uh, we can obtain uh, faster production of a mature mouth. Thanks.